Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter, beginning with the first verse. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to your feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, who bids us all to come and follow him. Amen. I have a drug problem. I've actually had one since I was a young kid. Yes, it's true. I was drugged to church (laughs) when I felt like sleeping in as a kid. I was drugged to a high school youth group. My mom, she would always say, Hans, you're a leader. You need to go. I was drugged. And yes, it was a drug problem of sorts. There's a huge difference between being drugged to church and following Christ. This morning is our last sermon in our summer preaching series called Galatians Set Free in Christ. And this morning it's all about following. We are set free in Christ for following Jesus. Fast forwarding in my life to college and the wilderness wanderings of my 20s, the drug problem ended. No one drugged me to church. I could sleep in and no one would know if I wasn't there. I had free will, free will to do what I wanted to do. And when left to my own devices, my own decisions, I chose to worship at the mother of our holy comforter. (laughs) My bed, yes. Yeah. So being born and raised a Lutheran, I I would say this about Martin Luther, that he was an amazing theologian. If you stacked his books, all of Martin Luther's works, his commentaries, uh, his translating the Bible into German, into a language people could read, I think, I'm well, I've been known to exaggerate, but I think it would stack from the ground all the way up to the ceiling. It would be that many things that Martin Luther wrote. An amazing theologian. And he wrote a book like this thick on the distinctions of the will free will, 
Uh, concerning things below, he made these distinctions. Con concerning things below and concerning things above. Concerning things below, Martin Luther would say that we have free will concerning things like decisions that we make on a daily basis, things on earth, like what we wear today, what we will say, what decisions we'll make, uh, what we will buy when we're grocery shopping. We have free will concerning things below. But concerning things above, Martin Luther would say that we do not have free will. Meaning, by our own understanding, or by our own effort, we cannot believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord, or come to him. We do not have free will concerning things above. Because if left to our own devices or our own decisions, we will choose sin. But Luther would go on to say in a small catechism, this game changer of a word, and that word is but. After he says this, I believe that by my own understanding, I believe that I cannot come to Jesus Christ or believe in him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified me and kept me in true faith. How many of you have had to memorize this sometime in your life? Can I get a show of hands? <laughs> yes. So that's ringing a bell. The Holy Spirit calls us through the gospel. So the last section of Galatians that we read today for the second reading, the Apostle Paul voices his final admonition, his final will and testimony to the church in Galatia. He says this uh, in ch chapter 6, verse 11. He says, see what large letters I write this in? This is emphasizing the importance of what he is about to say. He says these two important distinctions, these two important things. In verse 14, he says, May I never boast in anything except for the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul was saying, It's not about me, it's about Jesus and what he's done on the cross for us. It's not about what I've done, it's about what Jesus has done for me. Paul says this, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives within me. And then in verse 15, the second major thing that Paul is trying to say to the church in Galatia, Paul says, for neither circumcision or uncircumcision, they don't mean anything. But a new creation is everything. Paul was saying, hey, look, those issues that we're arguing about, this was the big issue of that time, circumcising, uncircumcising, if that's even a word, I don't know. Um, th those issues that we're arguing about, they don't mean anything. But what matters most is a new creation in Christ. Paul's major thrust here is you are all dying and rising in Christ. So the, this is the essence of Christian freedom. This is what Galatians is all about. Being set free in Christ from those things that are trying to imprison us in our lives. And then, fast forwarding to my life, when I was 28 years old, I was living in the hood in Omaha, Nebraska. There was a, there was a real encounter with drugs here. It wasn't me, but someone who had a real drug problem came to my house and stole everything I owned. I mean everything, except for a pair of dress shoes and my lemon lime popsicles in my freezer. <laughs> Kid you not. They went into our house with a, like a U-Haul truck. They had the jumpsuits on. They carted everything in and carted everything out. And that was... They, they took all of my stuff, and they took all of my roommate's stuff. And what was crazy, those lemon lime popsicles, it was so weird. I, I was, like, so thankful they left the popsicles. It was so messed up. Like, they took everything else. I had two bikes and everything. So for the next couple of weeks, I was very afraid. I slept with a fire poker in my left hand. I don't know what you call that thing you poke the fire with. I, I'll call it a fire poker. I slept with that 
for the next two weeks in my hand. I was afraid. But fear did not consume me completely. At night, I would run through those shady streets of downtown Omaha with adrenaline in my blood, chasing my shadows as I ran toward the streetlights, and then running from those same shadows as I ran away from the streetlights. And I ran and I ran on adrenaline. And then as I would run back to my house completely exhausted from the, I mean, heat and humidity of Omaha and the sweat, I would come back into my darkened house. And now it was a darkened, spooky house. I would flick my lamp on with the sweat pouring over my face and I would read this letter, Paul's letter to the Galatians, and I also read Romans. I read these and my fear faded away and faith began to take over my life. Instead of being drugged to church, I now followed Christ in a new way. And that made all the difference in the world. The Holy, Gospel, the Holy Spirit called me through the gospel. I believe that by my own understanding or effort, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel. This makes all the difference in the world, the difference between being drugged to church and following Christ. Why? Because it's just like flipping open a Bible. Flipping open a Bible, I said to the God that I had been running from for most of my life, I said, teach me, Lord, I am an open book. And so it wasn't by my own will or effort that I believed in Jesus Christ or came to him, but it was the Holy Spirit that called me to the gospel, through the gospel. Do you have a drug problem? Are you being drugged to church? Or will you follow Christ? The difference is huge, and the difference is paradoxical. When you are drugged to church, you think you know more than you really do. <clears throat> like, I don't need this stuff. I can handle all this stuff with my own moral codes. But when you follow Christ, you are humbled and you admit that you have a lot to learn. Then you become teachable. Then you are led. Then you are humbled and you follow the one who frees you from your own devices. You follow Christ and you are set free. And so on this 4th of July weekend, remember that you and I are free. For one, because of what happened 200 plus years ago, you do not need to bow down to a king. And for two, because of what happened 2,000 plus years ago, that you and I, we can freely bow down to a king who was crucified, died, and risen for you. Amen. <clears throat>